Welcome to this tutorial today where we are going to be talking about the cytoplasm. So the first thing we can do is have a look inside of our cell which is where we will find our cytoplasm and differentiate it from the nucleus. So we have our nucleus and we have our cytoplasm. But that doesn't really tell us anything about it, does it? It just says our cytoplasm is different from our nucleus. So let's stop there and make that distinction because it's true. Our cytoplasm is going to include everything within the walls of your cell, excluding the nucleus. So everything within the cell, but outside of the nucleus. Now let's just uh, draw this here as well. So this whole area from the envelope of our nucleus to the wall or membrane of our cell, everything in there is cytoplasm and it's all suspended in a uh, fluid like gel. And we'll also just write down as well that this is a eukaryotic cell because it has a nucleus. So we've got a eukaryote here. So everything is suspended in this uh, fluid like gel or gel like fluid, whichever way you want to say it. And we'll draw some little uh, ripples here to signify everything within the cytoplasm floating around within this fluid. And the cytoplasm itself is going to consist of three major components, which we'll briefly have a look at right now. So three major components within our cytoplasm. The first one being the cytosol. And the cytosol we've already talked about, right? It's just the fluid. And the vast majority of that fluid is simply going to be water. So it's mostly water. And we also refer to the cytosol as the ICF or intracellular fluid, which is a term you'll hear quite often. So when you think cytosol, think ICF or intracellular fluid and water. But our cytosol isn't just water. There are also going to be many other solutes dissolved within it to give it its gel-like consistency, and some of these solutes will include our proteins, our salts, sugars, our many different ions, but when you think ICF or cytosol, remember that it's mostly water. And that's going to bring us to our second major component of the cytoplasm, which is our cytoplasmic organelles. And if you're studying about the cell, you've probably heard the term organelles before, and it simply means little organs. So we have our liver and our heart and our intestines, which are the organs within our body, but our cells themselves have their own set of organs, and they're going to include things like the mitochondria and the Golgi apparatus and any intracellular vesicles, and you can see I put a whole heap of different structures within this cell here just to show that there's a vast array of organelles. So we've got a mitochondria here, we'll have a uh, Golgi apparatus and a uh, vesicle. So we've got the vesicle here and we'll also have that Golgi apparatus right next to it. So just writing these names down to show you that there's a vast array of different organelles within the cell and they all have different roles. So we've even got this endoplasmic reticulum. And something that we'll quickly discover about the organelles when we speak about them uh, individually is that they're mostly membrane bound. So most of them have their own membrane, just like our cell has its plasma membrane, just like our nucleus has its membrane as well. Lots of our organelles are going to have their own membranes as well, just to separate them from the uh, cytosol or the fluid within our cell. And they're all specialists, so they all have a specific task. Now up to this point we've learned that our cytoplasm uh, is comprised of cytosol, cytoplasmic organelles, and this last component called inclusions. And I've put inclusions uh, as little pink squiggles within the cell. Inclusions are mostly uh, simply commonly stored uh, nutrient bodies within that cell. So we could have things like uh, lipid droplets within our fat cells, uh, glycogen, which is our stored glucose or sugar. We could have 
crystals within plant cells. And when I say crystals, I mean something like uh, calcium oxalate, which is just a crystal that is commonly formed within plant cells. I don't mean our cells are gem hoarders and have a secret desire to accumulate sparkly rocks. So I've just pointed out a few uh, inclusions here. And the last thing I'll write down about them is that they are highly dependent on the cell type. So depending on what type of cell you're looking at, will determine what type of inclusion you're going to find. So that wraps up everything we need to know about our cytoplasm. We know that it includes everything within the cell outside of the nucleus. It's a gel-like fluid that is going to consist of your cytosol, cytoplasmic organelles, and any uh, inclusions that you may have within that cell. I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.